Thank you, Mr. Chairman and friends. The topic of my presentation is energy access and climate change, a developing country perspective. I'm going to take the case study of India and show how the benefits from energy access can lead to climate change benefits. There is a clashing position on climate change as all of you know, I categorize them as supporters and skeptics. What do the supporters say? There are serious consequences if you don't address the climate change issue, the rising sea levels, extreme weather, and impaired health. And it affects the natural system, forests, ecosystem, and biodiversity. And natural weather-related disasters quadruple in every last 40 years, and economic cost of disasters is significant and double in every decade. And what is the position of skeptics? They say it's not a scientific inquiry. If you look at the, or if you read IPCC reports carefully, it's filled with ifs, maybes, and likelies. And there is no relation with human activities, particularly Dr. Glassman's uh, study in 2009, and uh, <clears throat> his, uh, his thesis, it's ba based on the data that has been used by the IPCC itself, and he has concluded it's no, not the human-related activities that contributes to climate change, and it is the sun's movements. <clears throat> So, and uh, <clears throat> in the morning also it has been mentioned, climate models cannot be verified for its complexity and so on. And predictions are exaggerated. And GHG's theory is not the only explanation of warming trend. And it's high cost. Whatever you are going to invest today, and if you say you are going to get the benefits 80 years or 100 years, and if you take the discount rates and estimate the present value, it's not that significant. That's what the skeptics say. And timing of bringing climate change into focus, and many questions. It's because in 1980, China has started development, development path, and in 1990s, India has started. And the climate change issue came into focus only in 1980s. And there is a Himalayan blunder. You might have uh, uh, read the former IPCC chairman. He had uh, categorically mentioned that by 2030, Himalayan glaciers will be disappeared. And, uh, and later, <clears throat> when there was an uproar, and that statement has been taken back. So what the skeptics say is there should not be any action on climate change. What the sup supporters, it's a war action. I belong to the category of climate realists <clears throat> and say that we should follow sustainable development approach that is a bottom-up approach instead of focusing on climate change which results in poverty reduction and energy access. You take the bottom-up approach the poverty taken into consideration, energy access, which automatically leads to climate change benefits. <clears throat> Take the case of India. In 2000, by 2010, nearly 450 million people have no access to electricity, and additional 500 million have access to unreliable electricity, and 700 million people still use traditional fuels. There are two reasons. It is non-accessibility and affordability. What is the result? It's a loss of natural resources, significant loss, particularly fuel wood, and it prohibits economic opportunities as well as growth and social inequity between gender, groups, and regions, and degrades environment, local, national and global. Have a look at the facts and figures about India from 1950 to 2010. In 1950, 70% of the total energy 
is used by the household sector and by 2010 it is 38% whereas the services some 7 to 19% and transport 5 to 11%. There is a significant change in the sectoral consumption from <coughs> households to transport and services. And the total energy from 85 million tons of oil equivalent has reached 720 million tons of oil equivalent. This is the primary energy. <coughs> what is the look at the household energy? In 1950, to the to total uh, 57 million households, 97 million households, 97% <coughs> were using biofuels, which has been reduced to 67%. And whereas LPG, there was no use of LPG in 50, and 27% are using LPG. And <coughs> there are others, and kerosene 1.2 to 2.7. Look at the energy accessibility indicators for cooking. If you categorize urban areas into mega cities, metro, southern cities, and small towns, only 67% of the households in all the urban areas are cooking with gaseous fuels, either it can be LPG or biogas. And in rural areas, accessibility is only 11%. That means literally 140 million <coughs> households till in rural areas still need gaseous fuel for cooking. And in urban areas, 29 million households. Then what about the lighting? If you look at the lighting uh, um, statistics, 92% of the household um, villages, they, have, they are electrified, but only 55% of the households in those villages, they have uh, electricity connection. Energy affordability indicators, look at the rural and urban poor and non-poor, solid fuels, basically fuel wood, charcoal, and agricultural waste. 66% of the non-poor, they use solid fuels in rural areas and in urban areas, 32%. If you look at the total, 75% in rural areas and 47% in urban areas still depend on solid fuels for cooking. So what are the losses I calculated? Losses, productive time for adults, particularly girl, child, and uh, women, they walk long hours to obtain fuel wood. Per annum, 150 billion hours are being spent for obtaining fuel wood, cut it, and cooking. And for children, it is 78 billion hours. And there is also resource utilization and its opportunity cost because 70% of our total imports, oil is imported, and 3.7 billion US dollars in terms of kerosene, and 3 million hectares of forest and plantations are being cut to supply fuel wood to this household. And it's a, it also has an impact on the health. 1.2 billion, 0 to billion hours is being lost due to health problems, and 78 billion hours, particularly for children pollution, nearly 700 million tons of CO2 emissions. So what is the outcome? If you look at 60 years, we have <coughs> transformed from unlimited renewables to limited non-renewables. It's a locally available resources to transported and imported uh, energy carriers from basic service focus, that's the lighting, community transportation, to luxury service, it's a personal transport and air conditioning. And the focus initially was in the rural households and decentralized, and now it's urban service, it's a centralized. It's a loss, loss, loss scenario, loss to the individual, loss to the government, and loss to the society. What can be done? We have to change the system. <clears throat> if we really think the existing system is not beneficial society, and if we really want to change the system, what should we do? The first thing what we have to do is understand the system. What is meant by understanding the system is understanding the actors in the system. Who are these actors? I categorized actors into four levels. 
there is a meta level there is a macro level there is a meso level and at the micro level each actor has an influence on the system the influence can be large or small it can be a positive influence or a negative influence they certainly affect the system how it works <clears throat> at the meta level you have ipcc multilateral institutions and the powerful nuclear lobby and at the macro level you have governments national environmental agencies and research and development organizations and at meso levels you have utilities private sectors and at the micro level you have energy and users ngos and sustainability concerned groups we have developed a business model entrepreneurship based and how to provide basic energy services this at present people are talking about social entrepreneurship actually this uh, actor analysis for the past 10 years i am working in this uh, particular uh, aspect wherever i go in villages urban regions interact with the various uh, stakeholders particularly when i was looking at the energy efficiency how to <coughs> do it the first thing is household households are ignorant about the options even they are ignorant even they, are, they know about the vast options they are unable to pay for this one even if they are able to pay they are indifferent what can be done you have to convert them from laggard to innovators capacity building for the non governmental organizations and <clears throat> mailing newspaper articles and entrepreneurs this is a new link in the actor chain you have to introduce entrepreneurs into the system it's not i don't think academicians can tell them how to do it they need mentors and there are business organizations the dream merchants energy service companies equipment manufacturers and private utilities they should be bring it to the system to supply modern energy services and we have to convince them it can be profitable and the financial institutions which is an oxy oxygen pipe it is a local new business uh, model and global <coughs> local benefits will reach the uh, uh, global benefits and finally the, the government at present it is a controller and it should be converted from controller to facilitator <coughs> i have uh, estimated the cost and benefits both for cooking water heating and lighting for cooking it is 10040 billions and lighting 823 and <clears throat> this is for each household how much does it benefit how much are the time saved per household per household productivity business they can start a new business existing business if you if you have uh, modern energy service and the new business lighting tv education improved health energy savings and carbon saving every year 43 million tons so if you do it then <clears throat> the outcome is from non renewables to renewables from transported and imported energy carriers to locally available energy resource resources and subsidy driven to business oriented you need not have to <clears throat> bring subsidy here and growth focused to low carbon development oriented <clears throat> it's a win 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 scenario a win for the individual because he obtained the modern energy services and significant benefits are there there is a win for the government there is a significant uh, reduction <clears throat> in the subsidies Capa avoided capacity cost and avoided peak load benefits and the for, for society and there is the resource savings as well as emissions so this is the implementation at the different actors you have government you have energy service companies you have entrepreneurs you have financial resources and at the supply side whatever is the fossil fuel subsidy at present the government ga is giving nearly 15000 crore per annum it can be diverted for constructing the infrastructure for biogas and the banks market and financial business houses and the local bank and finally the government so this is the aligning the actors Uh, at one level you have an energy security actors and at the another level you have climate change security actors what one has to do is you have to design policies to map the energy security and climate security together 
so the <coughs> developing concern to climate change. You start with provision of modern energy services, there is an increase in quality of service, improved health, education level, there is an employment benefits, there is an overall development. Finally, it leads to climate change benefit. You start with the provision of modern energy carriers and it leads to climate change benefits. So it's not just about economics, it is about the values. It's not about climate, it's about the actor's behavior. It's a system's failure, not a pupil's failure. It's neither purely a technological nor purely an economic issue. Energy is a social issue. Thank you.